In this video, we're going to talk about coordinate proofs and geometry, and more specifically, we're going to talk about how do you prove that a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, is a parallelogram. So let's dive into this video. There's five different ways that you can show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. You could show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. That's the definition. You could show that the diagonals bisect each other, they cut each other in half. You could show that one pair of opposite sides is parallel and congruent. You could show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. And then the last one, you can show that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. We're going to do four of these different techniques. And we're going to be using the slope formula, the midpoint formula, and the distance formula. So you might want to memorize these and write these down if you haven't uh, already. So let's just say we're given this quadrilateral. A, B, C, D, and we've got the coordinates here listed and I've plotted it in the X, Y plane. So let's do this first method of showing that it's a parallelogram by showing that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Now, when we find the slope of a line, if two lines have the same slope, that means that they'll never cross. That means that they're parallel. They're going up at the same rate. And if we show that these two pairs of opposite sides have the same slope, they're parallel, and we'll have proved that this is a parallelogram. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to start off with this slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And let's go ahead and do, uh, I'll just write number one here. So this is going to be m, the slope of, let's say, a, d. So between a and d. So we're going to do y2 minus y1. So this is going to be 2 minus negative 1 over x2 minus x1, so that's 1 minus negative 1. Now when you subtract, it's like adding the opposite. So you can see we're getting 3 over 2. So that's right here. So I'm just going to make a little note here uh, that the slope is equal to 3 halves. We might need that later. Now let's go ahead and do this other side here, BC. So let's say the slope of BC is equal to negative 2 minus negative 5 over 2 minus 0. Okay, so when you subtract, it's like adding the opposite. So that's going to give us 3 over 2. And you can see that they're the same slope. So that means that they're parallel. So I'm just going to indicate on the diagram here with a little arrow to show that those are parallel. Okay, now let's go ahead and find these two sides, A, B, and C, D. So what's the slope of A, B? Well, let's see. The slope of AB is equal to y2 minus y1. And just keep in mind that the order is important. So if I did y2 minus y1 this way, I have to do x2 minus x1 that same order. Here I'm doing y2 minus y1, so I'm going to do x2 minus x1. The order is important, otherwise you're going to get a little bit different answer. So this comes out to 4 over 1, which is 4. Okay, so let's just write that down. Slope equals 4. And then over here for CD, we've got negative 1 minus negative 5 over negative 1 minus 0. Okay, so that comes out to uh, 4 over negative 1. Oh, I see where I made a mistake. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Okay, so these both have a slope of negative 4. So that is interesting because they both have the same slope, so that means that these guys are going to be parallel to one another. And we proved that it was a parallelogram, so that was method number one, showing both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so good. So let's go on to uh, example number two. Let's prove that this is a parallelogram by showing that the diagonals, they bisect each other. That means they cut each other in half. If they cut each other in half, that means that they're going through each other's midpoint, okay, one another's midpoint. So we're going to use the midpoint formula here, and we're going to use the midpoint of the opposite vertices. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say the midpoint of AC, and the midpoint, what we're doing is we're finding the average. So we're adding the x's together and dividing by 2, and we're adding the y's together and dividing by 2. So we have 1 plus 0 divided by 2, and we have 2 plus negative 5 divided by 2. And so that comes out to 1 half and negative 3 over 2. Now let's do the midpoint for uh, DB or BD, however you want to say that. 
BD, and so we're going to do the midpoint again. So we're going to say negative 1 plus 2 divided by 2, and negative 1 plus negative 2 divided by 2. And if we simplify that, let's see, we get 1 over 2 and negative 3 over 2. And you can see that these guys are the same. They match. So that means that they are bisecting each other. They're going through each other's midpoints. So that's method number two here. That we showed that it's a parallelogram because the diagonals, let's see if we can draw this here accurately, are bisecting each other. So let's see, is this one half, negative one and a half? Yeah, pretty close. Okay, my diagram's not perfect, but you got it. So let's go to the third example here. Let's show that one pair of opposite sides is parallel and congruent. Now we've already established that, let's say these two sides here are parallel, but are they the same length? So here we're going to be using the distance formula to find the length of AD and the length of BC. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do the distance of AD. And so here we're going to use the uh, square root. Let's make a little room here. Square root of the difference in the x coordinate squared plus the difference in the y coordinate squared. Add those together and take the square root. So we've got 1 minus negative 1 which is 2 squared, and 2 minus negative 1, which is 3 squared. So that comes out to 4 plus 9, that's the square root of 13. So let's just write that down, square root of 13. And if we do the length of CD, we're going to do the distance of CD, same formula. It's uh, going to be, did I say CD? CB. CB, because we're doing the opposite side, showing those are congruent. So we have 2 minus 0, which is 2 squared, plus negative 2 minus negative 5, which is negative 3 squared. That comes out to 4 plus 9, which is also the square root of 13. So see how these match. So what that tells us is that the opposite sides are parallel and congruent, and that's method number 3 here. The order, the number doesn't matter, but just to show you that we're going through the different types. And then the fourth one is to show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Well, we've already shown that AD and CB are congruent. We just need to show that AB and uh, CD are also congruent. So we're going to do the distance formula two more times. So we're going to do the distance of AB. Uh, let's see, which comes out to 1 minus 2 is negative 1 squared. So that's uh, negative 1 squared plus uh, let's see, 2 minus negative 2, which is 4 squared. So that comes out to, uh, let's see, did I make a mistake? Uh, let's see, 2 minus negative 2 is 4 squared. Okay, good, yep, so that comes out to the square root of 17. Okay, good, and then we're going to do the distance of this side here, CD, which is equal to the square root of uh, negative 1 minus 0, which is negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus negative 5, which is 4 squared. So that also comes out to the square root of 17. So we prove now that these two sides are congruent. So we've got both pairs of opposite sides congruent. That was method number 4. And then method number 5, this one's a little bit more challenging, uh, diving into the angle measures. Uh, we'll leave that one for now, but we can see that there's uh, these are the ways that you would approach these coordinate proofs using the midpoint formula, the slope formula, the distance formula, and you might want to just be very organized the way that you notate everything. So you notice I'm using distance with the subscript here, AD, so I know that's the distance of AD, etc. So I hope that helps you understand coordinate proofs a little bit better. Great job. I'll see you in the next video.